Consider this prompt. It says, recommend a suitable prompt that will ask you to produce a lesson plan. So I am asking Bing Chat to give me a prompt that I can then use to ask Bing Chat to produce me a lesson plan on an appropriate topic. So I will click here and let's see what happens. Here it comes. And it's pretty straightforward. It says, can you create a lesson plan for teaching and you put whatever the subject is to whatever the grade of the students are? So I've taken the prompt that chat has recommended and for the subject I've put here Python lists and for the grade level I've put 18 year old students. So the prompt is can you create a lesson plan for teaching Python lists to 18 year old students? So I'll now click on this here and let's see what it comes up with. Here it comes. And it's finished. I will now scroll up to have a look at the top of the lesson plan it's created. And you can see here it says lesson title introduction to Python lists. It gives the objective of the lesson. It tells you what materials you require. It specifies what it thinks would be a good introduction and gives you a time of five minutes. And then down here it goes on to direct instruction, gives you 15 minutes and it makes suggestions as to what you should do. And then it goes on to say, guided practice, 15 minutes. If I just read one of them, it says, have students work in pairs to create their own lists and practice using the methods discussed. Now, I wouldn't have that. I would have them working independently. So I can see a need to edit this lesson plan. And you can see I will scroll down slowly and there's independent practice there's sort of a summary of the lesson and then there's a, an assessment process and it will be a question of reading this to see what you think now this came from the prompt that bing chat itself recommended what i don't like about what it's produced is the fact that it hasn't given me any examples of code that I would want to use within the lesson or indeed any exercises. But what we have to bear in mind, we're having a conversation here. So I'm now going to say to it, please give me the lesson plan again with the addition of program code and let's see what it will do. You can see my next prompt here. It says, please amend your last response with the addition of code examples to support the lesson. And you note that I've put the prompt in as if I'm talking to Bing Chat, which I am. I'm talking to it via text. So now I'll click on this arrow and let's see what it uh, produces. Here it comes. And you can see it already gives us two examples of code. Here's a third one coming up. The code examples keep on appearing. Here's another example. And it's finished. I'll now scroll up to have a look at some of the examples. Here's your first one here. It's saying my list equals and it creates a list with one, two and three in it. And then this line simply prints the list to the screen. And if we look at this one down here, it's created an empty list. It's appending one to that list, then it's appending two, then it's appending three, and it's printing the list. And I can scroll down and look at some other examples. But what's key here when you're using Bing Chat to produce your lesson plan is never make an assumption that the code examples they give you are A, going to work, and B, actually fit appropriately. I have to say that they do 99% of the time, but it's always important to double check before you actually take the programs into the lesson with you. But of course, when I look at this, if I carry on scrolling down, it's given me all these other examples and I haven't checked to see if they're working yet, but I would have to, if we have a look at this one here, for example, it's got a loop in it, a while loop, and it's also got a selection construct. I'm not quite sure what that's doing because I haven't looked at it in any detail yet, but I certainly would copy that and paste it into an editor and run it to see if it worked. What I haven't got, as I've already mentioned, I haven't got any exercises to give the students during the session. 
You now can see I've given another prompt which says please amend your last response with the addition of student exercises. Before I continue, let's take a close look at this prompt. It actually says, please amend your last response with the addition, student exercises. It's clear that I've missed the word of here, because it should say, please amend the last response with the addition of student exercises. But I'm going to leave it as it is to show you that Bing Chat will still work even though your prompt is not really 100% accurate. So let's have a look at what it actually gives us and see if it can make up for this mistake that I've made in the prompt. So I'll now click here and let's see what Bing Chat produces. Off it goes. It's still giving me the programs as you can see. And here are some student exercises appearing. Now, I suspect that what I've done so far will be sufficient. I would now copy the last response, which is I'm scrolling up over now, and I'd paste that into Word, and I would then go through it, and I would edit it appropriately and change it with the experience I've got in teaching these types of lessons before. But what happened here, we will have a response from chat that will give me a very good starting point for a lesson plan. Now what you're really getting here is productivity. You're improving the use of your own time. If I wasn't making a video here, I think that, well I know, this would take me between five to 10 minutes and I would end up with a lesson plan that I would then need to edit. And I suppose the editing process would take me 30 minutes well, I altered it to something that I was happy with as an experienced teacher. What I would also do, however, I'd make sure every program worked. Not only that, I'd make sure I understood what the program actually does before I would use them in any of my lessons. But the thing is, the programs it show me, I can see already that I know what they do. And if you're an experienced teacher, you'll most probably be able to do that as well. But the thing is, you've got what I like to often refer to as a first cut. You've got something that you can work with. Now, just imagine you had to type this lot in to start with. It would take you quite a bit of time. The productivity gains with this, in my opinion, are vast. You can sit down one afternoon and knock four or five lesson plans out easily after you've edited them and also checked the programs. I know this because I've tried it and it does speed up things dramatically. By the way, I'm not recommending lesson plans and I'm not saying they're a good idea, but we all know in education you have occasions where you have to produce them. From my perspective, I much prefer working on worksheets, something you can give the students and say, right, we're working through this lot today. In other words, the concentration on the material we're going to use for teaching, not this kind of material lesson plans, which are designed to please administrators, inspectors. I'll say no more in case I say too much. But when you need to produce them, I cannot stress how much easier this will make your life. And now you can have enough there to wave under the appropriate people's noses and say, now, would you like to see my worksheets? Which is really what we need to produce for our students. Please consider subscribing to the channel and click the bell to ensure you get an update every time I upload a video. Maybe you would like to consider supporting the development of these free videos via Patreon. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter and also check out the supporting website.